Last time after we wrapped up this hive, you're probably wondering why didn't I reconfigure to where she have more laying space down on the bottom. Well, that hit me when I got into the house. Another thing that hit me was that I'd recently purchased these Man Lake um, in, in feeders that go inside the hive. This is a one gallon, so it's about two inches wide. I should be able to take the frame out and stick it in there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it together. It comes with these rubber bands that you wrap around this after you've got it in place. But man, I was like thinking I was making some sugar water in the house. I was like, wait a second. I got these things. I don't have to mess with that anymore. So this is what I'm gonna do. And also I wanted to reconfigure. So like, you know, I got done marking that queen last time and put her back in. Had all these frames up here empty for them ready to go, ready to lay on. But she's been doing a really good job laying down here at the bottom, but she doesn't really have that much space because they've been filling it with nectar and pollen. So we're gonna go ahead and move that up. Now, this feeder, if you've been watching what I did, it's just got this wooden insert that goes over the top. It's got these rubber bands to keep everything tight. Well, these, these are pretty tight anyway. They're, they're pulling in against the uh, wood. But then when you put these guys in there, It makes a little bridge, or a bridge, a ladder, so the bees can crawl down in there and then crawl back out so they don't drown. Not that some of them won't, however, ideally, by doing what we just did, we prevent that. Now for this reconfiguration, I wanna see, this is a really good frame that I think well, the back they're gonna have to draw out. I don't know if that's a good one to put down in there. This one's gonna take a lot of cleaning up. But once they clean it all up, she's gonna have a lot of place to lay. Or, I go to this one. This might be the one. Yeah, this is the one. I'm gonna put this down in there. She's got a lot of places to lay in here. And then I'll probably remove one of their original combs that was all like, you know, it's the ones that I pulled out that I kind of rubber band together. This one right here, just make sure she's not laying. They've got a little bit of pollen in it, a little bit of nectar, but I'm not really concerned. about removing it. It's just, you know, it's kind of a weird, weird shape. This is the frame I saw the queen on last time I was in here. She's not laying on this backside, but she has completely laid on this frame. At least, I say completely, completely where she has room to lay. And I think what we're gonna do is put this frame right in the middle here. Just got a little bit of burr comb I wanna clean off. I got a bee stuck. So now on the bottom we have a nice frame that she can fill up right in the middle. Next to it, we've got one of their original frames that I, oh check it out. They chew this rubber band up. So they've already, as you can see, they've already adhered this comb to the top. So there's no reason to have this rubber band in here anymore.
same with this one. I don't know if they'll let me get to it, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I did not like that. <laughs> Bees went flying. Try to get that out of there. And this one's not doing anything. So I've removed that rubber band. It'll give those bees that were working on getting rid of it something else to do. Here's a bee with no abdomen. I was hoping we were going to be able to fit this in here. There we go. So this is a one gallon and it fits in a five frame nuke with four frames in it. Still have the sugar water. I'm going to leave that on just because I got the hole in the top. Might as well let them finish it off. They'll then go ahead and cap the holes up with propolis. This frame of brood Still has the rubber bands. I'm going to try to remove them. Mm -hmm. Now we got one off. You know what? They have kind of built it into this comb. So I'm just going to leave it. <clears throat> That bee with no abdomen keeps coming back. All right, so now let's show what we've got. We've got empty, just a black plasticell foundation, black plasticell foundation, a feeder, and we've got two combs that came from after we extracted some honey. What I've got to fill this with is this old funnel. Just change my oil. Oh, get out of here, birds. You leave a frame on the ground if you have chickens and they'll get out, they'll just start chewing it up. By the way, I'm just kidding. I didn't just change my oil with this funnel. I haven't done anything with this funnel. But this one I'm gonna fill it with. Got about, it's a one-to-one -one mixture of sugar to water. And I started, you know, when I was filling up these jars, I was like, I have to come out here every four, four or five days and put a new pint jar of sugar water on the top. It's gotta be a better way. And guess what? There it is. So I'm gonna dribble a little bit of this on the top here.
So there we go. Reconfigured our box. All right, done fighting off the chickens. They kept trying to eat my comb. Had to put it up here, run them off. Um, but uh, pretty pumped up about these new feeders. I totally forgot about them. I had them locked in a, I mean locked. They were in the garage in a box. And because we're in a good nectar flow, my bees are down there in the orange groves right now, picking up orange blossom honey. So I have no reason to be using feeders, and I didn't even think about using one of those on the inside of here. But uh, after this reconfiguration, I was in there making sugar water, and it, it just hit me. Oh, I have those feeders. I need to put one of those inside, especially since I have all this empty room. That feeder will take up some of that void. But we'll probably come back in here uh, about another week, check on them again. Because of this feeder, I probably actually wouldn't have to come back here in here for about another two weeks or maybe even longer than that going to take these bees a long time to take a gallon of sugar water down and I've got it mixed at one to one um, another thing I want to come back and check on is that little pollen patty that I put in there I have no idea you know if they're even going to eat it it's just a, a recipe I found in a book and I'll put it in the description if you got any comments I'll also put a link to, uh, for these feeders in the description I'm pretty happy about these feeders um, I think you know I don't know how much of a robbing problem I have if any However, when I first brought the bees back home, I know for a fact that I had a little bit of bees from outside coming in. That's why the entrance is reduced so small. I don't know if it can be seen right now, but I've got the entrance maybe half, half inch to three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch, just because when it was open a little wider, I could definitely tell there was fighting going on on the outside. So um, once I closed it back down, I haven't seen any of that since. But like I said, we'll come back in here about a week. We'll check on these things. Hopefully they're doing good. Hopefully she's built out, built out some population and the combs that I've uh, given her in the, or the comb I gave her in the bottom. Maybe she's even moved up into the top. But um, I'm guessing this, this hive should be built out pretty strong. I think we'll get it built out pretty strong in about two months. So we'll continue to check on it, check on its progress. Uh, stay with me throughout that. If you got any comments or questions, leave those in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.